Yeah, another determinism video, I think. Um, but it's going to have other elements in it. So, first, that stupid cowboy guy comes back as his other account again. And so I have blocked him. But he, And he just keeps making these idiotic accusations. He says he's, he calls me a moral nihilist because I believe you need to have some value to punishment for punishment to have any value. As the... Uh, eye for an eye thing, for example. There'd be no point in taking out somebody's eye because they took out somebody else's eye if you're not going to deter or prevent some future eye removal. If nothing will be gained, then all you've done is made another blind person. There's no value. Causing harm with no residual positive impact is sadistic and idiotic. I'm not a moral nihilist because I don't think there's any point in punishment without residual value. I still think stupidity is awful. I think causing harm is repugnant and disgusting. I can't possibly be called a nihilist on the subject if I'm disgusted, repulsed, and anti the behavior. The fact that I'm not stupid enough to cause pointless harm as a reaction doesn't make me a nihilist. Being not an idiot, a sadistic idiot, does not make me a nihilist on the subject. You lying piece of shit. <laughs> Jeez. And people defend this asshole's right to lie about me. <clears throat> I mean, they see, the commenters take no responsibility for their aggressiveness. I can't force this video into their life. I can't take my videos and shove them up their ass. I can't do this on this medium. This medium doesn't allow me to shove my video into their face. Yet they have a right to shove their lies and slanders and rudeness into my face, right onto my video. That's a higher standard of responsibility. I don't have any responsibilities when this video can't be shoved in somebody's feed. And I mean shoved in their feed in the sense they're obligated to see it. I'm essentially obligated to monitor my comment section. I'm going to have to see their comments. And so their comments should be out of a higher standard. If you're going to be a heckler, you have to be a smart heckler. Being just rude obnoxious, changing the subject, and forcing somebody to, in a sense, you know, making the accusation, well, when's the last time you beat your wife? Nobody should be obligated to defend themselves against liars. I mean, that's just a waste of my valuable time. And if you're going to do it, you've got to make sure you're not a liar. <laughs> okay? If you're going to make accusations, make sure they're true. Because so I don't have an obligation to keep answering liars. All right, so anyway... <clears throat> just really obnoxious. So fucking rude. Alright, anyway, so the mystic. Alright, so this it's you know, there's a there's the real subject and then there's this competing um personality thing. So I've certainly made the accusation veiled and direct that the mystic is a cop out selfish pussy that he's basically finding rationalizations to live a comfortable life rather than a devout life. Um, clearly, in my opinion, intellectuals can see there's a ton of problems that need fixing and they can intellectually know they're not going to get fixed if everybody decides to just sit in their Lamborghini and polish the you know, Corinthian leather. That's not going to work. Um, no chance of success, so to speak, in fixing anything. And the mystic has basically just decided, I'm going to make rationalizations and excuses for why nothing can be done, there's no solution, nothing can be fixed, you can't talk to people, you can't explain anything, you can't do this, you can't do that, um, as a cop-out. Now, he's making the counter-argument that I have some sort of ego deficit disorder, 
and that I need to get on the internet and declare my superiority and blah blah and declare this and declare that and play some kind of blah 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 game. When I would certainly defend myself against that accusation by just saying no, I'm I'm um, distraught at what I see. Um, it diminishes all capacity to enjoy the cheese or give a fuck about the leather um, because the blood images kind of are always haunting me. The fact that the world is horribly fucked up, the fact that I am not capable, um, as strong as I need to be, to be able to fight the fight, take it to the street, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's like the opposite of some sort of um, uh, gaining gratification out of the experience because what I get out of the experience is a, a tremendous amount of frustration and failure. So it certainly isn't inflating my ego to do this. <laughs> if anything, it's corrosive to the protective bubble of ego I could create for myself if I didn't have this sense of responsibility and obligation. My life would be much easier ego-wise to find rationalizations of why I'm great, brilliant, and fantastic, and interesting, and all that shit. Because I could do all that, I can be all that, without this devotion. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, he can have his, he can choose to defend himself against my accusation that he's just rationalized excuses to be personally comfortable, rather than personally distracted and uh, living a life of distress and unhappiness, um, contemplating um, how um, shabby he's leaving things, <laughs> uh, that he's settling for, um, taking his uh, in a world of uh, such uh, horrible um, blight. Uh, so anyway, and so then on this determinism issue, I, like I said, I think this is just part of our rationalizations that are getting argued here. So he's just saying I'm just doing simplistic pub talk by talking about the fact that um, we're fundamentally logical organisms and that in the process of being pushed by the past, the past gives me knowledge. Um, I'm free because of intellectualism and science. Uh, I was free to think that God might not be right. And I freely took that and thought about evolution and started thinking about its implications and taking it to, to its implications on my own psychology and thinking about motivations and what a self is really doing and introspection about my own personality and my own selfishness and the motivators. And <clears throat> the bottom line, though, is, is that in that process you also find that your brain is intrinsically logical, that it's intrinsically, it will, as much as you want to avoid admitting you suck or you're selfish, your brain will make you see it whether you like it or not. Now, you can dispose of it with some sort of rationalization. You can make excuses for yourself, and I do that. I think everybody does. Um, but it does give you the, the kernel of that truth. And I would argue that our brains are fundamentally logical. Um, and that if you give them uh, a, a decent fact set, they'll treat it fairly. The brain tends to, tends to see trees where trees are, tends to see cliffs where cliffs are, tends to see swamp where swamp is. It tends to identify things properly. And it only doesn't do that when it's desperate, uh, you know. Um, so, you know, people stuck in tradition and uh, devout to their parents or something, they can't possibly negate religion because then they'd have to submit their parents are imbeciles, that kind of thing. Um, so there's reasons why they can't escape their wishful thinking or their hope psychology and all that kind of shit. But anyway, so the past is, here in this video he's saying, the past is pushing us. No argument. My argument is, though, <clears throat> what kinds of things are part of that past. And the kinds of things that are part of that past is understanding what logic is. Understanding, <clears throat> as I've described it, that 
it's basically just what facts do. So facts, it's not like we make logic. Facts make logic. Facts point, whether we like it or not. They do the pointing. We can deny them, we can pervert them, we can inject some cloud shapes or some seems like or some bullshit to try to fudge with those facts, but facts do point. And what's pointed to is the fact in, in this conversation is through this determinism and logic and high-mindedness and having intelligent conversations about reality is the simple truth that here we are on the DVD being pushed and we can in fact see where the DVD is heading. We can see the writing on the wall. That's why we have a cliche for it, the writing on the wall. It's because we can in fact see ingredients and we can tell what they're going to produce as a product. And so there's no denying the fact that even though it's determined that I'm being pushed by the past, the past does have billboards it creates in front of me. I can read them. They have writing on them <laughs> about projections about what the future will be because we've been there and done that before. So the simple argument is is that it would clearly be part of the determinism that we would recognize that problems don't get solved by nobody doing anything. That's a simple piece of logic from the past. <laughs> okay, nothing you don't you don't win World War II unless a whole bunch of people show up and endure horrible sacrifice, um, give their last measure of devotion in brutal, awful, disgusting ways. Um, you don't win some other way. And in this conversation about our relevancy, clearly the wrong answer is retreat. The wrong answer is surrender. The right answer is even if um, the odds of winning are weak, the amount of effort it takes for me to make the appeal to my fellow human beings don't cause unnecessary harm. There, I can say those words, don't cause unnecessary harm. I mean, really, if, if you can find some other way, if you can find something else to eat, you can find something else to enjoy shooting, you can find something else to, you know, dot, dot, dot. Find something else to play with except a, a new created human being. Find something else to entertain your life or make your life meaningful than playing God. Um, play a different game. Um, that doesn't take any effort. I mean, not a substantial effort. Certainly I'm not risking having my arms and legs blown off. But for the mystic, it's sort of the same thing because for him to say the words and to mean it would mean that he would have to live with it as an idea. That it is in fact true. That there is a lot at stake and it's worrisome. It's upsetting. It's unpleasant to think about. It's depressing. And he won't give that much, in my opinion. Maybe because he thinks it will make him crazy. Maybe because he thinks it will just suffocate him. Well, then just admit you're, uh, uh, you're unfit for battle. But don't say the war isn't worth fighting. I mean, don't take your inability to be a fighter and glorify that and make excuses for that like that's the right answer when I think every bit of logic says that's clearly the stupidest answer you could provide to the question of how do you fix the future. You don't fix it by pretending you can't see it or by pretending you can't do anything. <laughs> The determinism won't allow you to do anything. No, the determinism clearly permits you to be a cause fighter and to win.
You just don't want to do that. And that's what you should admit. So anyway. <clears throat> so I'll play this, and then I'll play his next video, which should be really quite profoundly irritating. <laughs> because again, it's not going to be on the subject of determinism. It's going to be on the subject, no doubt, about some sort of battle of... Um, again, this is almost like the Pyrrho tactic of calling everything a psychological disorder. <laughs> you know, if you say it's un unacceptable, you have a psychiatric disorder. You're mentally ill if you find um, death depressing. That kind of almost argument. And it's just kind of bullshit. So I just play the very end of this and you'll get the feel for it. That to happen, which is bollocks in a deterministic context. In a normal chatty context, it's fine and dandy. In a deterministic context, it's utter, utter ego bollocks. Right, so he's saying to have a conversation about the fact that we can see the future. <clears throat> uh, and that's not inconsistent with determinism. It's certainly not inconsistent with human function. That we see it happening and that our brains can react to the sight of it happening, and that we react to the sight of it happening. That's clearly consistent with determinism, and it's clearly consistent with what people have done in the past, and in many circumstances, for, good, for both good and evil. But clearly, <clears throat> those perceptions of what the future looks like it's going to be and the human reactions to them are completely in the context of being fully part of the deterministic process. It's not some sort of silly pub conversation. The fact that we are logical and that we have a lot of information about how things happen in the world clearly isn't anti-determinism. In my humble opinion. Yeah, well, like I said, it's not, it's not very humble, actually. Anyway, so this one's titled, Same As It Ever Was. I mean, the word same in there just is almost a giveaway, right? It's, it's almost like you know, people just keep trying to say, well, it's always been that way. It's always, duh, duh, duh. it's always, duh. you know, it's just excuse making for not trying. Uh, this is a video to probably wrap up the series on determinism. Do I have anything particular to say? Not really. I don't think it's going to be a bit of a, um, an overview of where we've been over the last uh, few videos. And is there anything I can say in a phrase? There isn't really, so if you want to get anything from the video, I think it's going to be a recap, so it's going to be the whole video. There's not a, a particular thing I want to say. Nothing new. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, it probably isn't going to, I don't see much point, because I don't think your recap is going to um, take responsibility for the parts of the videos, my responses, that you've ignored. Frankly. And when I say nothing new, um, that's <clears throat> just show how nothing new this is. Oh, that's what I had to say, because the entire past life has made me say nothing new. Perhaps we should talk about some other people besides me, um, because I'm sick, sick of going like this. You're probably sick of watching it. Um, I'm about to go shopping. If somebody rams me with a supermarket trolley on, the, on my heel. Yeah, see, this was that, that, that was in a video maybe seven years ago, six years ago. Way, a very long time ago. And I remember that story. So he told the story about it. He went to the store and how it really pissed him off that some bitch hits him in the back of the foot with a, with a shopping cart. And, and yeah, you know, and it was just sort of a funny. He also had a little mousetrap story. And it's, you know, very interesting. It's what they had to do. 
it's where their life had led them, that they weren't paying enough attention. Right, and that's where it goes back to this crime and punishment thing, in, in the sense that I don't see anything to defend in criminals, but I'd always, I've always argued that the number one thing a criminal is, is stupid. That's what causes it. A lack of knowledge of how they're being fundamentally destructive in their behavior. That they're being bad, and they don't see it. That's just plain stupid. I mean, what makes me not a criminal isn't, most of the time, fear of punishment. It's fear of, you have to be stupid. I don't want to be stupid. And if they weren't paying enough attention, say they were thinking about the fact that they, they've got to take the cat to the vet to be put down. That's, it, it, it's ex explainable. There are reasons that people do dumb things like ram me in the heel with a supermarket trolley. And my reaction will be one reaction. Right, and so that I can make the same argument in this context. So you're saying there's reasons why Gary is what he is. Uh, it's because he's got some sort of ego issues, blah, 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 blah. And that's why he's aggressive and nasty and snarky and blah, blah, blah. And I'd say, bullshit, he's just uh, spent his whole life... Um, uh, being a bog wanderer, and um, he, he didn't sign a contract for that. Uh, so he didn't ask for any of this trouble. He never expected some kind of gold, and so he's sick of having arsenic on his fingers because I didn't dig for gold. I don't. I don't want gold. I don't want the consequences of gold digging. Um. So I'm more of a person who's disgruntled because he's been put upon and for what for something I didn't want anything to do with or <laughs> something I wouldn't suggest was a good idea uh, this creating living things to chase silly needs forever and ever um, I'm sort of I, I wanted to get back to the part where it gets to the mystic being also a personality unfortunately and that's the unfortunate fact, is that all this philosophy has to come from these gooey, fleshbag humans who can't really do philosophy often uh, fundamentally honestly because they're always distracted by their gooey purposes, their, their fleshbag purposes. And I think one of his fleshbag purposes is um, finding some way to uh, enjoy his cheese. Um generally thinking about it in the past I haven't been around that many times three or four uh, the more and more recent ones I think I just I don't apologize like a good Englishman for having my heel in the wrong uh, wrong place but I appreciate that the person is very unlikely that they've done it on purpose so my reaction there's just going to be one reaction and that's what my life has built me to have that one reaction at that one time. So you watching this video, your reaction will be what your life has built up at the time. We're all doing. Right. <clears throat> and and yes, so but what I'm saying is is that I think there's a the underlying part is is that we all know that psychology crap exists. And I would say that there's a certain amount of intellectual denial. All right? Like smart people again. Smart people are the ones who should be able to see the fact, okay, of things not working, of there being a fundamental waste in this system, fundamentally that it is unacceptably wasteful, way too expensive, all these things. These are things smart people shouldn't be able to miss, regardless of this personal experience crap. This is just basic fact combining. And that's the part I'm finding obnoxious. You people understand what evolution is. You've probably read The Selfish Gene. Um, this is a dangerous thing, this machine, evolution. I mean, if you take any of that biology seriously and start looking at what it's doing to these organisms and what it's subjecting all these demonstration models to, they're just toys for the DNA molecule. The molecule is doing the evolving. 
and and the fucking victims are these these poor suckers who are having to go out and test these bombs you know getting blown up by the let's let's make bombs and let's you know blow up the bombs and the bombs happen to be feeling things what we should be doing as it were and uh, okay in this video if there's a recap thing to, to note it's probably this that we think well all right i think i can accept that what i'm doing right now has been conditioned by everything that's happened in the future in the, sorry in the past but can't we at least think that because we all have regrets well if i have um what should we say if i hadn't done this whatever it might have been when i yes uh, started smoking cigarettes that was a big one for me but then again See, this is the whole problem. You learn from those things, and those things also do add a context to your life that may have made you less vulnerable to some other addiction and played a vital role in some other way of making you who you are. And, you know, that's the, that's the catch of the damn thing. If you could actually go back and fix it, it's like if you could go back and kill Hitler, would the new, new world you created be better? Because what if? World War II did end prematurely. Maybe the Russians would have gotten the bomb first. You know, that kind of shit. It was whatever it was, 24 or something. And that might be a good thing from my perspective. I don't know. My life would have been different and so much better or whatever. But then you put yourself back into that position where you were 24 and it's exactly the same thing again. The, your entire life is behind you and there's an empty space in front of you and you're completely controlled by the reality the, the strength yes right the ignorance that's my argument is still going to be okay so you're still talking as a gray-haired guy now you're not 25 and 17 or 12 you're um more mature in terms of been there and done that heard that and heard that and heard that um, and the cliché should be now ringing in your head as being just so useless and trite and trivial. And so much of the crap that is spewed and controlling of the human destiny. All the 24-year-olds are being controlled by a bunch of shit memes. Shit noise that the society's making. And again, you can see that. And to say that I, it's too much of a burden for me to even once a week say something like um, traditional culture is immature and silly and stupid. That um, all these people looking for hopeful and you know, uh, <laughs> romantic solutions. Um, Everything will be all right. No, it won't. Unless we make it all right. Because on its own, it doesn't do all right. It does essentially almost completely wrong. That's what the evolution... Evolution made Tyrannosaurus for fuck's sake, and they were highly successful. That's the winner crocodile think about it See, and that doesn't take much work once a week of um, uh, control which is behind you so even at 24 there was no way you could have made a different decision you could have only made that decision so your regret is you're led to make you are led to be in a regretful state now without <clears throat> Well, again, whether you regret or not, and whether you rationalize your regret as I just did about smoking, as if, well, maybe it did fix some of my problems. Um, but there's lots of things where you could say, yeah, it's probably less likely it has any bright side. Um, it'd just be nice. It'd be really cool if we could do this, let's change it and see what it would have happened. Just as right now in this position we're sitting in, we can do that. We can use our imagination. We can run the future. 
and we can see different scenarios that are possible. And I'm saying that that's part of determinism is being able to do that. Run examples of different ways the universe would play out, different scripts read, and different um, conclusions to the movie. We can do that right now, completely consistent with determinism. And I'm saying if you do that, I think that logic thing will kick in and it will figure out which one of those scenarios, those scripts, probably should be the one you're reading. And you were 24. But at 24, there was nothing else you could have possibly done. The whole thing is very, very odd. Uh, but when you do think about it, and hopefully these videos are being reasonable enough to, so you can think about it, um, it's the truth of the matter. It, it, it's either that's the truth of the matter, or there is something... There's some, no, see, this see, this is, so, so, so this is, the, again, the false dichotomy. It's either this, this notion that we have no thinking capacity, because that's almost what you're saying. You're not saying we can think about it. You're saying we can only think about it in this limited, horrible frame where we're totally idiotic, like we were 17 again. No, I'm, I'm not 17 anymore. I can think about it in a bigger frame, you know, lots more facts, and my imagination has, is a lot better at um, recognizing real risk, doing more rational reward to risk assessment. And so I'm even, I'm much better at not only predicting the future, but understanding what kind of uh, script reading will be effective. I go with a no I, and there's some you in your head. It just doesn't make sense. You say, say again, it, it just doesn't, my imagination is limited to, the, the, the creativity is limited to how many strings are on my guitar, so to speak. How, how, what, you know, I, I can only play the keys on the piano. Yeah, we can't play keys that aren't there, but there's lots of keys, and our imagination is powerful. And that's completely consistent with determinism that we would apply this thinking process, do some imagining about what exists, understand that my welfare or comfort logically can't outweigh the, the, the comfort of all the potential in the future that's at risk. There's a tremendous amount of suffering that I may be able to prevent with a minor amount of inconvenience now. And you're essentially saying you don't think so. It's not worth the investment somehow. And I'm saying I don't think there's any logical excuse for that. And you're trying to imply that the reason why you can't see it is because somehow your past and the history, 10,000 years of human civilization, haven't given you the capacity to see it. And I'm saying, I don't buy it. Yeah, I don't buy that. So, does it have to be a non-controllable force in your head that isn't affected by the outside world, but can affect the outside world, and can steer you in the future. It just, there's really, I mean, if you want to make comments or have... Yeah, you know, I, look, I, you know, I, I'm conceding a point here that this is very difficult. It's very difficult to be this stupid gorilla and have to do this high-minded stuff because the stupid gorilla wants to bang, bang on my chest and it wants to blah, 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 and it wants to just pick up a stick and beat the snake. It wants to do these simple... It wants simple solutions. It doesn't want to have to do all this thinking shit. It doesn't want to have to, you know, all these levels of, of clarification and 
reconstitu you know, reconstitu redefinition of words and you know explicit definitions and you know restatement to be you know as clear as, as possible about what exactly is being stated and analogy and analogy and analogy and DVD and this and this and this to try to make these arguments and so yeah this is tedious and unpleasant but clearly we're capable of doing it as we're doing it in my opinion it's, yeah it's really important because everything's at stake so to speak the stakes are huge they literally are we might be able to prevent World War III. And you're saying it's so remote a possibility, it's not worth even these conversations. Even these conversations are too much of an effort. And I'm like, I don't believe that. I don't believe you, you think that. I just think that it's just too... It's too distracting to your ape. Your ape wants to go sit and eat a croissant. Just continue with thoughts of how you think it could work. Well, all that's how it's going to be, but after nearly 10 years of now on this YouTube thing of starting with free will and being no free will and then listening to all the arguments that everybody says, I think I'm reasonable enough that I give everybody a chance. That's the way I am. Um, I've really heard nothing that sounds... I know what I'm saying sounds horrible, but I haven't heard anything that sounds, uh, should I use the word scientifically, sounds practically any more practical when we have to actually sit here well so i mean this shouldn't have been in the context of our conversation because clearly our conversation isn't a disagreement about free will it's a disagreement about feudalism and fatalism it's a disagreement about what determinism means in terms of how it disables uh human imagination how it how we become dysfunctional as being able to project um, visions of the future, not project them, see them, um, to read writing on walls. That's what this is a conversation about. You're making an argument that somehow the determinism inhibits our ability to recognize danger and react to it. And make a video to describe how we think the human works. This, after ten years of thinks, is the best I can come up with. And the second idea of how it might work, I can't even, I honestly can't even think of a second one. So, so again, it's a false duality in our conversation because I'm not arguing for some other way it works. I can only regurgitate a mixture of the ingredients I've been provided. There's no added ingredients I'm adding. I'm just mixing stuff that already exists in terms of words and concepts and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just defending the fact that I think, as I've pointed out, that if we can say there's a theme or a, a, a habit, um, no, function in this meme evolution it is a refinement it is a it does get more logically stringent the fallacies fall now maybe not for the bar people maybe not for the general public they're still living in their fallacies their fantasies but I'm just saying if somebody's intelligent gonna have an argument we know the obvious fallacious nonsense and we can make these arguments and I'm saying the tendency is that logic demands and I'm just saying in my opinion I don't think I think you're using rationalizations to be a lazy ape I think the second best idea is the God one 
is it um, is the soul the soul is imbued in a baby at birth by God and that is the thing that can um, yeah, well, I guess you you're not as smart as I thought. Sometimes, I mean, I think you 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 think that quantum bullshit makes any sense at all. Um, you know, I I mean, it's just I I think if you gave that any real thought, you'd figure out bending space and waves in what, and yeah, it just it's nonsense. Um, but I don't know why you would even play with this souls and spirit shit. Where's this? What is that crap? Why? Why give it any? Why dignify something so silly? I mean, it's like saying, "Well, if anything has any meaning, it's that leprechaun theory." It's silly. Does things that um, is guilty that can take that is in the brain, and it, it takes the the devil and the angel ideas coming in and isn't affected by them but could make the the independent judgment i think that's the second best idea but, but it's a silly idea and i think i think you already know that uh, ego and humiliation are just evolutionary mechanisms of psychology and that just has to do with alpha and integrity over time and not being a hypocrite hypocrite hip hypocrisy isn't uh, <laughs> you know um, doesn't make good leadership uh, it doesn't make a good alpha. So alphas are going to be embarrassed by um, revealed hypocrisy and duplicity. Quite frankly, what I've been trying to explain over the last few videos is what I still believe is the best way of describing it. And this, because it's the most modern, is the latest way of me describing it. It's just the same. It's all still the past. And we can have regrets about what we did in the future. Sorry, in the past. But if we take <laughs> again, but that's my whole point: is the, the 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 past is written, and those regrets are useless. We can see potential for regret in the future. We can actually see ourselves not performing in the future. We can see our lack of performance now revealed in, in, in diminishment in, in the quality of life in the future. We can see it now before it's written. And we perfectly have the capacity to say, I don't have to read the bad script. That script's rubbish, the one I was reading. I'm writing a new one. That's part of the determinism. I write a new script. And I read the new script. I become a vegetarian. I mean, that's how I became a vegetarian. I didn't become a vegetarian for aesthetic reasons or because it made me pretty. No, it was, it was inconvenient and it was my own hypocrisy. I could see myself making silly rationalizations for my selfishness and I said I'm going to try not to be such an asshole and I tried and I said oh yeah that's not so bad ourselves back into the past the same details still pertain and we couldn't have made any any other different decision we had to make the decision that we made at the time. Right, and that has nothing to do with this. Like I said, the last three videos don't have anything to do with that conversation. So I'd say that this paraphrase even is a tr tremendous cop-out. This, this rephrasing of the history is just to completely deny the substance of the conversation, which was really about um, why fatalism and feudalism is retarded. <laughs> why um, it's perfectly reasonable to have conversation about why uh, tiny investments and sacrifices now um, are mandatory considering the potential weight of good they might have in the future. Like I've got to make this, this, this video like this at this time and you've got to react to it like you're, you're going to react to it. 
uh, that's what life is. Yeah, I just you know to suck all of the um, the fact that it's it does evolve and that we're part of that evolution that we're 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 adding value to the words, the concepts, the subjects. You know, just to turn it into some sort of you, know, you call me a wanker. You're just kind of you know in some sort of after wank depression here. That um, you know isn't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's being fair to the value and the necessity. Um, the necessity created by the fact that the conversation has value importance could be meaningful to the future. That people have this conversation now. Oh, the, the, it is. <laughs> But that's one thing I think we can all agree on, that life is seemingly rather odd. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching over these few videos. Bye. So that's his bailout. Uh, familiar. <laughs> Surfing 1, 2, the end. <laughs> Boring 1, 2, 4. Yeah, that's it. Um, fine, whatever. That's, this is a, that's a theme on the internet. Um, happens all the time. That's why it's very frustrating because I, I've often talked about how I have this passion for creating some sort of debate forum. And essential to the debate forum is the fact that the two men enter and only one man leaves. And you know, it's kinda of, it's gotta be to the death kind of a thing. <laughs> you know, you gotta these arguments have to be done completely to really get to the core of it, to really dissect it completely, to, to gut the guy and show that his, you know, it's not a dural cell battery. <laughs> you know, the whole thing is, you know, Chinese muck work. Uh, anyway, um, okay, so that was disappointing. That was just kind of a drag altogether. Um, let's see if there's any comments worth uh, mentioning. Hey, Nick. Super. Uh, the future of a conversation seems inevitable. This f future of this, the future of this conversation seems inevitable. Uh, whatever. Uh, you're right there. <clears throat> the future of this conversation is already inevitable. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, it's all, you know, this is such work, and to call all of it, you know, to dismiss it as all this, um, um, it's, it's, it's clockwork, but this is one hell of a clock. Can I say it that way? It's just, it's just a Rube Goldberg machine, but it's one hell of a Rube Goldberg machine, motherfuckers. Every day it's, it's manufacturing the next Rube, you know, and then the, it adds the rube and then it adds another Goldberg and then it adds another rube and another Goldberg. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's an amazing Rube Goldberg machine. All right, and this logical imperialist is such a cunt. I agree with you. I think the problem with Gary in particular is that he sees an active acting element higher up in the chain, in the hierarchies. No, I don't see any acting element. I argued that it's logic, and we've increased our fact reservoir. And I've argued that the facts basically do the logic. And what I'm arguing is, is that the facts we have gleaned now are is that we're just psychological basket cases. Evolution is whoa disgusting, and we've got to kind of find a way to make this good enough. And if it's going to be made good enough, only we are going to fix it. Because nature's just going to keep making Tyrannosauruses, fucker. <laughs> Jeez, you people are just such dumbasses. He thinks that brains which are braining can make a difference in the day-to-day -day world, which they do. But if there is <coughs> reductionism, that makes no difference. So again, dissection doesn't help you understand function. That's essentially what he just said there. He's an idiot. 
I take it that you speak about a very fundamental aspect of the universe <clears throat> that is computable at the very finest structures, smaller than elementary particles, and that in consequence the whole universe is determined. Well, it doesn't. You don't even have to say all that shit. He obviously thinks it's all determined in the sense he doesn't think there's a magic bit. Now, Gary would admit that. It's not that I admit it. It's I've made some foundational and ground arguments on the subject. I've actually been innovative in the sense of remixing the verbiage to say it better than most of you idiots. Uh, that at its most fundamental, it is determined. Yeah, so I'm not admitting it. I'm the one aggressively saying that shit for brain. Then again, he thinks somehow the good demands uh, that we don't tell people deterministic tales. What does that even mean? Then again, he thinks that somehow the good demands of us that we don't tell people deterministic tales. What is that? What does that even mean? I'm against lying. I'm against inventing silly words like compatibilism. What are you talking about, liar? Uh, then he starts a new paragraph with, and, <laughs> he might be right, I, I mean, just face palm, you such an insipid troll. Although determinism might be right, it's absolutely all there is, it makes people in, I mean, unless you're advocating magic. There's only two choices, determinism, magic. It makes people in experiments act more selfishly. Determinism doesn't do that idiot. Let students read a text. That's psychology, idiot. Determinism and psychology aren't the same subject, retard. Psychology is determined, but it has nothing to do with the subject of determinism. <laughs> that they don't have free will, and more of them than the control group, which has read a controlled text, will snatch a penny off an unsupervised table and take the penny for themselves. Oh, isn't that amazing, a penny? <sighs> um, yeah, those are just psychology. That doesn't have anything to do with determinism. That just has to do with the fact that human beings are generally selfish fucks, and if nobody's going to see them, they'll stick their penis in lots of places. Other consequences are in law. Oh, here we go. Where there is determinism whatever that means. We don't have an argument to hold people responsible for their, argu their actions. We don't have an argument to hold people responsible for their actions. Well, except for the fact that deterrence requires it. And if you're going to punish to create deterrence, it would be kind of idiotic to punish the innocent. Yeah, it would be sensible to punish the guilty. That's how reward and punishment works. You actually reward good and you punish bad. Not because bad is bad, merely because if you punish bad, it'll deter bad. <laughs> Duh. We can bring forth an argument that we need to deter society from their evil ass. Yes, of course, deterrence isn't some kind of silly argument. It's an incredibly rational one. Reward and punishment works. It's a really reliable concept, retard. But apart from that, nope, no sense in punishment. So, in part from the vital role that reward and punishment, incentive and disincentives, how incredibly valuable they are in terms of controlling behavior, besides that, <laughs> yeah, it's worthless. <clears throat> yes, exactly. That, that is true. Yes, without deterrence, Punishment has no value, but deterrence is incredibly valuable, idiot. Uh, I think we have to learn to live with determinism and no free will. Well, again, is, this is it's silly to think. I never had to live with free will. I never had to walk around on my free will crutch. I never thought about myself and said, oh, I'm a free willer. Never even occurred to me to bother with that. I knew I was a thinker and I knew that a lot of my thoughts <laughs> were completely dependent on my circumstances. I knew I wasn't thinking in Chinese. Fuck. I mean, 
and reform ourselves so that we can stomach what seems to be the truth. Well, again, it's, it's you're stomaching. It's going to require um, medication. You know, uh, 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 that that's not that that's always going to be something synthetic. It's going to be a rationalization, or 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 an acquisition, uh, an, an advocate an abdication. There's no other way to stomach it. Because it's not, it is unacceptable by its very nature. You can't just pretend it's acceptable when it's unacceptable. You can. I'm not saying you can't rationalize and, and fool yourself. I'm just saying that obviously that's not stomaching it. That's transforming it. So if you're going to take it seriously, the truth won't be stomachable. You're just going to try to make it survivable so you can function. I think that <clears throat> I better leave um, planning for a better life while understanding no free will to another video. And planning for a better life while understanding no free will. Well, yes, again, it's um, I, I don't I don't see how it's even relevant. I, I just don't know why you people are so obsessed with this idea of your free thing. And um, I guess, like I said, part of that is, is my own advantage. Visit of, like at around 11, I went through a period where I recognized myself to be a disgusting, selfish cunt. I realized that all my friendships were kind of my manipulation. I was using them. I did, there was something about them that I, I wanted. I loved them, or I did this, or I did that, or I did that. But it was always a need I had. And I was more taker than giver. And uh, that recognition that that was all the wheels had made in me was an and I recognized that that's just the nature. And I said, boy, I'm going to try to be more than a crocodile. Because apparently I was made to be a crocodile, and being a crocodile is stupid. Um, best I just say that, yep, it was determined that the students would pick up more pennies after hearing about free will. It's fucking tricky shit. That's what Beardy Man said. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I always hate when they use these psych experiments, especially the college ones, because they always paraphrase them a lot different than the experiment actually conducted. So when you see actual video of the experiment, you see all kinds of subtle manipulations where it's almost like the good touch, bad touch of the people talking to children about being sexually abused, and they almost like are con talking the kid into saying, Yes, he sucked on my willy, when then maybe that never happened. It's like they're, <laughs> it's like they're talking them into it. Uh, all right, so I might as well read this last comments by Coax. Responding to your two previous videos, too, I agree with you. The DVD has to be written. Well, I, I don't, that's not even the right sentence. The DVD has been written, not to be. I don't see how it is any other way. Well, again, no one's arguing it some other way. We're just arguing that, obviously, it's a little more complicated than that in the sense that we're actually alive and we're actually participating in something called the present. And the present isn't on DVDs. The, it just isn't. Just want to add what you probably know. The problem for us humans is intuitively understand the DVD is that we can project many different futures for ourselves. That's what I said, right. So, this idea that it's written, part of what was written was the fact that we could do thought experiments. And I would argue that the evidence from those thought experiments is conclusively supports the idea that not doing anything is for dumb people. And most of the time we are correct. I can imagine traveling to some country or not eating something or calling someone or whatever and lots of things will be different in the actual minute 
you know, minutiae uh, of the event, but the overall prediction I made will be correct. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, that's being almost a little bit too bold in a statement. Obviously, you're going to get a lot of the subtleties wrong because you won't realize that you get hit by a car because you're in the middle of the street at a different time and blah, blah, blah. I mean, all the incidental butterfly wing kind of changes that will take place that you won't ever be able to anticipate. But clearly we can know some basic things like if people don't drink and drive, fewer people will be killed on the highway. That's just a fact. And so why do we pick one prediction to do over the other? And why does it seem like we have the power to pick one? Well, that seems like we have the power to pick one it seems idiotic because, like I said, most of the time I am struggle with those dissident choices. I have two choices. Um, one, doing one thing will cause me inconvenience, doing, uh, but it creates good, good points for my sense of uh, heroism, you know, being a good person. The other choice is um, superficially um, beneficial um, and it looks like you're solving the problem but you know logically oh yeah it's completely bullshit. It doesn't do anything, it's a it's band-aid. I'm, I'm being a heroic nurse showing up putting my band-aids on and it's bullshit because I should be curing the disease. That kind of thing. Um, so anyway. And so why do we pick one prediction over the other? And why does it seem like we have the power to pick one? Again, I don't know where you get that perception that you have power when clearly I would argue that most people are troubled by a lot of decisions they have to make in their life. You know, when to put their parents in the nursing home. or when to, They don't feel like they have power. They feel weak. Uh, to have an answer, a good enough answer. We can even go against what we really want emotionally and do the boring thing we have to do that we don't want to do and so on. Clearly, but it's always, the answer always comes through some thought that changes the weight of the risk-averse equation. So you're always looking for a piece of weight to put on the scales that make a difference. So you hunt for some weight that either balances for either side that will make it more decisive. And that's what you hunt for in your brain is reason, weight. So there's no choice, there's a decision. This is where Gary had the intuition. I just, I hate this. I, I almost want to kill people for this kind of stuff. I've always, I talk about how I have no use for the word intuition, the concept itself. I have the sign think over there. I just hate intuition as a concept, as anything to do with philosophy or anything valuable. It's just nonsense. I'm anti-intuition. I hate people associating me with that stupid fucking putrid word. Fuck you for that, bastard. This is where Gary had the intuition that you can't predict a future you haven't seen or known about in some way. So again, I, I didn't have any intuition. If I said something, I said it because of a logical process, not anything called intuition. Although you can <coughs> generate artistic maybes. 